about. Uh, I found, found, find myself uh, working with consciousness-altering plants such as ayahuasca, such as DMT, uh, to learn about the, the mysteries of consciousness. And I hope in some way I've been of service, I've been useful, I've been helpful in, in, in helping uh, other people in their own inquiries and adventures. Graham, uh, having made the journey that you've made, you obviously, and with the understanding you now have, how much optimism do you have that the consciousness transition that's going to be needed can occur? I actually have <laughs> great optimism. Really? And my optimism has been, uh, has been increased by, by my, my, my travels in the United States uh, on this uh, lecture tour um, because I do keep on meeting people whose, who, 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 whose minds are full of questions who are no longer willing to accept the lies and the deceitful disinformation campaigns that are, par that are foisted upon them by their governments, who, who want to reach out in love and care for fellow human beings rather than to beat those human beings down and force them into a, a particular narrow way of life. I, I think that America is full of good and decent people who care. Uh, of course, this is a huge country. There are many, many millions of people who, who are with the forces of, of control and darkness, but there are equally many millions who, who are not and who are against it. So I think we're at a turning point. I think we're at a crossroads. Uh, but I do believe that a transformation of consciousness is possible uh, and is on the way. And, uh, you know, uh, these things begin in a small way. At first, you don't see the signs of it. It seems hopeless to, to uh, for each of us as an individual. We've, we feel hopeless. How can we, how can we change the world when so many huge dark forces are ranged against us? But if each and every one of us tries in a small way, in our own local community, in our own families, in our relationships with others, in the way that we approach the world to make changes. And I see evidence that huge numbers of people are trying to do that sincerely and decently and honestly. Then it could have a cumulative effect that could be very dramatic and critical mass uh, for this change could be reached much earlier than we think. So, you know, the ancient Maya uh, may uh, may be right uh, with the notion that, that it's not so much uh, an end of the world, uh, but an end of a particular age of the world, and that a new age may indeed be just around the corner. Uh, yes, I do remain optimistic. Excellent. Uh, Donovan, I think it is, in Beaumont, Texas, you're on with Graham. Uh, yes, it is, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk with both of y'all. Um, I had uh, recently read uh, the book uh, Supernatural and really liked it. It was great. But I was kind of curious about, um, I know I've listened to you quite often, uh, Mr. Hancock, uh, on Coast to Coast, and um, you talk a lot about the ayahuasca, but um, I didn't really see a lot of that in your book. And I was wondering, are you, are you going to have another book uh, that will talk about your experiences more? or do you, uh, Well, I have, I, have, um, uh, I have one major chapter on my ayahuasca experiences uh, in, in the book. I didn't, I didn't want to talk too much uh, about my about my personal experiences you know sometimes if you go on endlessly about your own visions and experiences it can become boring to others what i wanted to do was to drop hints uh, and provide the information that would show people that this is an interesting area for them to inquire into themselves and since i finished writing the book i have to add that i've continued uh, drinking ayahuasca i now uh, uh, travel down to Brazil every year to drink ayahuasca. I'm um, quite certain that I will go on drinking ayahuasca for the rest of my life on this planet at least five times a year. It's wrought such wonderful and positive changes in my life uh, that I never wish to be without it again. And that's a choice that I'm making as a free adult uh, in this world. How much flack have you taken? Um, I've, I've taken an awful lot of flack. I, 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 do find, I do find people get very upset. Some people get very upset and very angry and accuse me of advocating and promoting drugs. And I want to emphasize that's not what I'm doing. What I'm advocating and promoting is adult responsibility uh, over our own lives and the choices that we make about our own bodies and uh, consciousness. Uh, I've been attacked uh, by academics with virtually every book I've written, uh, and that is true of supernatural natural as well. Um, you know, they, 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 there is the, uh, among, among scientists the view that they own and possess all knowledge oh, yes. uh, and that their way of doing things is the only way of doing things. So how dare this, this writer 
uh, step forth uh, and say that there that there might be there might be another way. And I've got I've got I've got used to this over the years. It's it goes with the territory. Um, mm-hmm. If you if you write books that go against the prevailing order and the prevailing ideas of society, then you are going to be attacked. In former ages, uh, people who questioned the status quo were, were actually killed. Uh, in our present age, more often they destroy your reputation uh, and they make it impossible for you to function. And I faced, uh, I faced a lot of that uh, o- over the years. Uh, sometimes it's been very tough, sometimes it's been very difficult, but I've never felt that I should stop doing what I'm doing. Good for you. Mike in Cleveland, Ohio. You're on with Graham Hancock. Hi. Good evening, Art and Graham. Hi. Art, someone needs to suggest to Major Ed Dames that remote viewing the DMT molecule <laughs> or the pineal gland may allow a repeatable contact with that ET mind he's seeking. And Graham, mm. a previous guest on Coast to Coast, Todd Murphy, has a product, Shakti Technologies, yeah. that has one putting eight magnets on one's head via a hat. The mm-hmm. software program causes a rotating magnetic field effect that he says 80% of everyone who tries the device has an out-of-body, near-death experience, contact with deceased and alien realms. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that. Uh, magnetism is an extremely effective way to alter consciousness, and altered states of consciousness are the key to access uh, to, these, uh, to these supernatural realms. And in fact, uh, Graham, I think some uh, scientists have uh, found a certain area of the brain when uh, stimulated uh, electrically does also produce these experiences. Well, yes. I mean, uh, and the mistake that those scientists make is that they that they then suggest that the experience is somehow being manufactured in the brain. That's right. Uh, We would expect to see brain activity accompanying any experience. Uh, but that does not mean that the brain activity is causing the experience. It's just because our scientists have a prejudice against things that they cannot actually weigh, measure, and count. Uh, when such experiences that can't be weighed, measured, and counted in the conventional sense occur, scientists want to tell us that those experiences aren't real and are being made up or generated in the brain, and they show us brain activity, and they say, there, that's the proof that the brain is making this up. But no, it's not. All the brain is doing is what the brain always does. It's active when we have experiences. All right. Uh, Carl in West Allis, Wisconsin. Hi, uh, gentlemen. Um, I have a quick comment directed to, uh, to both of you. Sure. Um, uh, Art, you earlier you'd mentioned something about uh, wondering if, if we're alone in, in the universe. Uh, perhaps the aliens, when we try to contact, contact them, have caller ID. And it also, I can see their concern about what we're doing to the planet. Uh, it, it just brings to mind a book by Isaac Asimov, uh, the first book of the Foundation Trilogy. Uh, and the, the planet Tranter comes to mind. I don't know if you're familiar with it. But uh, my question is, in to, to uh, Graham, is... Is it possible that, that, that some of this damage uh, done uh, 12,000 and a half years ago could have been directed by uh, an intelligence? Um, yes, uh, I, I dare say it is. In fact, that's what, uh, that's what all the ancient myths suggest. They, sh- they suggest that that former civilization incurred the wrath uh, of the gods, incurred the wrath of the spirit world uh, by its behavior. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't rule that out at all. And in fact, that's, you know, that's my concern with our society today, that, that unless we take control of our own destinies and, and, and stop our government, governments leading us headlong over the abyss, that we will once again lose the mandate of heaven, once again incur the anger uh, of the gods. Well, you can't rule that out. Um, this would be a first-time caller. Ben in Tucson, Arizona. You're on with Graham Hancock. Good morning. Good morning, Art. Good morning, Graham. Hi. Hi. I'm an anthropologist um, at the University of Arizona, and I have to say a huge fan of uh, Heaven's Mirror. Thank you. Uh, my question, though, has, has to do with the Dropa Stones. Are you familiar with these? No, I, I'm not familiar with the Dropa Stones. Tell me about them. Um, the Dropa Stones were found in Asia in the 1930s, and they depicted um, a story of beings coming from the sky that crash-landed in Asia, mm-hmm. and 
the story was written down by the people of the Ham, mm-hmm. and um, these people weren't um, able to rebuild their aircraft, and so they couldn't return to their planet. Mm-hmm. My question is, 